Okay. Mm, so we should be live. Um, so the first thing that we should probably do is, um, as usual, as, uh, as a tradition, ask uh, everyone on IRC if they can hear us, if the sound is coming um, across OK. Um, but I'm assuming yes. Um, other than that, um, then uh, welcome to uh, this new edition of the weekly Ubuntu community team um, Q&A. Um, I am David Planella, um, a development liaison, and uh, today I'm joined by Nicholas Cax, um, QA community manager um, and legend as well. And um, we're part of the <laughs> we're part of the um, of the community team um, at Canonical. Um, we've got um, we've got also Michael Hall, Daniel Holbach, and uh, Alan Pope on the team. Today won't be joining us. Uh, well, sorry, today they won't be joining us. But um, next week, I think we've got. Um, I think next week we should probably have um, Mike and um, and Alan on the Q and A. Um, other than that, um, just a few uh, quick words on uh, words on how this uh, all works. Is um, so the way this uh, this event works is that essentially we've got a full hour for everyone to ask their questions. Um, you can ask anything related to um, to Ubuntu, to open source, to um, essentially whatever things you think that uh, we can uh, answer for. Um, it's not about um, support. Uh, we can provide some minimum level of support, but uh, for more complex support questions, we recommend um, asking on uh, Ask Ubuntu or on the Ubuntu forums or on mailing lists. Um, and um, yeah, other than that, uh, if you've got any questions, uh, you should join the hash Ubuntu-on-air IRC channel on Freenode and uh, prepend your um, your questions with a big question uh, in caps. So let me just do this now. All right. So I think for the preamble, that was uh, that's pretty much um, it. Um, Nick, I've been talking quite a lot. Um, do you have anything to to add, or can you do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so I'm Nicholas, and as David said, um, I uh, I typically focus a lot on quality. Um, all the uh, any of the core apps contributors know me quite well uh, as the as the guy they see when their tests don't work or why they have to write tests that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I will just make a small plug. Uh, if you're interested in testing, today we're having a uh, hack fest. Same place, Ubuntu on Air, you're already here. Uh, come back at 1900, and we'll be doing demonstrations about how to write test cases uh, for both manual and automated. So you don't have to be a developer. You don't have to know a programming language to write a test case. We have needs for manual test cases as well, and we'll be hacking on some of those. And if you've never done this before, this is the event for you. So. Um, if you are interested in writing automated tests, we'll also be going over those and writing those as well. Uh, we tend to write our automated test cases using autopilot uh, for the most part, and those are written in Python. And we'll explain all that today, uh, again, at 1900 DTC. So I hope to see you there if you're interested in uh, testing. All right. So it seems that we've got the uh, first question already. So Richie is asking, um, are there any plans for bigger changes, features, for the next uh, Ubuntu 1410 desktop edition? Um, uh, I mean, I can add a couple of things, but um, Nick, I think perhaps you're more familiar with uh, with the components uh, and everything that, uh, that needs, needs testing. What, what big changes do you think um, would be worth highlighting? Um, well, the, the biggest changes really are uh, kind of the, the same stuff that we've been trying to land, you know. So Unity 8 a big one, um, and Mirror would, would be the other big one. Um, we can check both those things out right now. 
on uh, probably the best and easiest way to do this would be to utilize a CD image that has been specifically created for this purpose. So it's a live CD. If you've ever used a, a Ubuntu uh, CD before, you put it in your PC and, and it boots up to a live session of Ubuntu. So this is the same type idea, except it will be running all of the uh, next generation stuff. So it'll be running Mirror and it'll be running Unity 8. Um, I can find the link for that in just a moment and link it to you. Uh, but they, they're produced uh, every day, and so you can just grab the latest one, uh, put it in your machine, and, and check it out. Um, I'll caution you that it does not work, uh, probably won't work for you at all in a virtual machine, and uh, so it's best to try it on live, hard live hardware. And that's not an issue, again, as I said, because you'll be booting in a live CD, so it won't, uh, you don't have to install it. It won't harm your, your current installation or anything like that. Um, and those guys are always happy to hear feedback on what works or what doesn't work. If it, if it loads or doesn't load, that sort of thing. Uh, otherwise, what are the features? Um, you're going to see a lot of a lot of stuff happening around conversions. So a lot of the stuff that we're doing on the phone, you're going to start to see come across on the desktop as well. Um, some of the things that I think are cool, although they might not necessarily be user facing, are some of the changes to security. Uh, we've had app armor on the desktop for a while. Um, I'm curious to see how uh, app isolation will sort of come to the desktop, how, uh, how much sandboxing will do. In other words, uh, when you have an application um, now uh, running on the desktop, uh, we have some policies in place to prevent that application. If it was a rogue application from being able to take, take over your system or, or do bad things, you know, uh, do your password or, or whatever it is, um, basically execute something that you, you might not be aware of or do something uh, nefarious. Um, and so I'm interested to see how some of that stuff comes across, which we've implemented on the phone. Um, and we've taken it to a, a further step, seeing as the phone is a completely locked down environment. Um, so I, I feel like a lot of that convergence stuff uh, is stuff that you'll see. Some of it won't be user facing, like I said, the security stuff, while well, other things will be. Um, you'll see some new applications and that sort of thing. Uh, I think we'll see some QML applications on the desktop. Uh, we'll probably see some. Um, talk of, of uh, default applications again, uh, um, and uh, maybe we'll be seeing new music players and file managers and that sort of thing. And that's, a, that's a bit longer term, I suppose, than, than 14.10, but uh, that's, that's, that's the type of stuff I, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing uh, and expect to see as each cycle goes by. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. All right, so we've had uh, quite a lot of uh, questions in the meantime. So the first one is uh, Chloe Wolfie Girl is asking, do you feel Canonical is spreading itself too thin with Ubuntu 14.10, Mer, uh, Unity 8, desktop, tablet, and phone? Um, I think um, the good thing about those technologies that you're mentioning is that um, they go all together. Um, and um, the nice thing about it is that um, on getting Unity 8 and Mirror to work together, uh, for example, or operating this to, to work on, on the desktop, um, we're essentially doing work that, uh, that will um, be equally necessary for the desktop and the tablet. So each one of these technologies is key for, uh, for, for conversion. Um, so to answer the question, I don't think we, we, we are, to be honest. Um, I think we're tightly focused on, um, on the phone right now, on the, um, on the, on the RTM that deadline that's going to be in, in August to get uh, everything ready. Uh, for phone manufacturers to use the image and put them onto, uh, sorry, to, yeah, to use the image and put them on the, onto um, retail phones. So in that regard, um, I say we're tightly focused on making sure that those technologies work solidly for uh, for the phone, and uh, as a side effect, uh, or rather as a planned side effect, uh, uh, all of these technologies will help convergence on the on the desktop uh, as well. So it's not that we're duplicating work, we're Working at unifying the technologies that uh, that we'll be using in the, in the next years for Ubuntu. Okay, so we've got um, rather than a question as next, we've got a suggestion from D Shimmer. How about getting folks uh, from non-canonical or related? Sorry, let me just reread. Oh yeah. They're saying, uh, how about getting folks from non-canonical but related companies or industries to come chat and field questions 
for example, companies that use Ubuntu uh, or Linux in general as an active part or the, or part of their business plan. Hardware companies who try to support Linux or who offer employees time to be active in developing their community. Or folks from projects that are closely tied or really popular in Ubuntu. I'd say that's a, that's a brilliant idea. Um, I mean, we can do both. We can either invite people to this um, to this chat, or we can invite people to to be part of the audience and ask questions. As with any, uh, as with with anything, we take any suggestions that uh, that you might have. So if you've got any, if you know anyone um, from those groups uh, who would be interested, um, I suggest to um, to uh, essentially get in touch uh, with us and with them uh, and invite them to participate. Okay, so next question. Um, Piotrek is asking, I'd like to ask about Ubuntu Touch. There is almost nothing new uh, on the internet. Also no news about Mir. I have the impression that those plans have uh, lost their initial vigor. Is there a plan to release them quickly? Well, there definitely is a plan, and um, definitely we're not. Um, um, definitely, these projects are going forward. As I, as I said before, we're planning to have um, a phone ready for release um, in August, and uh, this includes um, Mir, um, the Ubuntu Touch images, uh, obviously. And um, and essentially everyone is um, is really busy right now making sure that um, that um, that the images um, are ready. Um, what I would recommend if you're interested in following news about uh, Ubuntu um, on the phone and its development would be to subscribe to the Ubuntu phone mailing list. Um, you can do it. You, you will find it at ubuntu-phone at lists.launchpad.net. And uh, if you go to if you go to launchpad at launchpad.net um, tilde um, sign Ubuntu dash phone, then um, you'll be able to join to join that uh, that mailing list. We discuss development of the, of the phone. Um, in there, we also send updates about the status of um, of Unity of the SDK and of all of the components that. Um, that essentially are part of um, of Ubuntu on the phone, um, and part also um, of the the Ubuntu app development ecosystem. Right. So I guess I would just say that even though maybe you haven't seen it, um, both Mir and Ubuntu Touch are are iterating along quite rapidly. I think um, there was a, a Mir release this month as well as last month, so they've had um, steady, consistent updates on both those. So. Yeah, I mean, one of the coolest ways to check things out is if you if you have the hardware to do it, um, is to install it on a uh, on some sort of fabled device and and watch the images mature. You can really see a lot of things coming together now, so it's pretty exciting if you have the hardware to be able to do that. So, cool. All right. So next question. Um, Nagain is asking, will there be any chance that Ubuntu Touch supports iPhone 4? Well, I think here the chances might be a bit slim, to be, to be completely honest. Um, the so what we do is, um, to just to give some, some, some bit of context, um, the images that we produce uh, for Ubuntu phones um, are tightly coupled with uh, with hardware. Um, at this point, what we do is we um, we have um, hardware reference devices. These are the Nexus family of devices, including the Nexus 4 for phones, and the Nexus 7 and um, Nexus 10 for tablets. Um, it is possible, um, and not also uh, not also possible. So it's, there's also there's, there's also a thriving community of porters to port. Ubuntu uh, images to other devices. Um, you have to think that uh, the phone wall is not the same as, uh, as with desktop computers, um, and there's quite a lot of difference between um, between hardware um, in phones. There's no standard. Um, there's no like. There's not no standard such as the PC or something similar to a standard. Um, in terms of iPhone 4, I'm 
to be honest, I'm not familiar with the iPhone 4 hardware uh, insights, so I don't know how difficult it would be. But uh, given the track record of um, um, of keeping, um, um, well, essentially keeping uh, a very very tight uh, tight product in terms of um, of hardware and manufacturing their their own their own their own hardware, um, I don't think it'd be easy to port um, to port an open source system to to the uh, iPhone four. Of course, I'd like to be um, to be wrong on this, but um, but yeah, I just prefer to say it uh, like it is. Okay. Um, trying to find the next question, David. I think it's Chloe Wolf Girl. She's asking when Ubuntu will be the number one used OS. Um, That's well, an easy question for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's an easy question. I was just going to say, I'm thinking back to uh, we closed bug number one, uh, which which was which was part of that story. And, and the idea behind bug number one um, was that um, I think it was Microsoft had a, a dominant market share. In other words, uh, Ubuntu was seeking to disrupt the current status quo, which was uh, Windows. And if you think back to when the, the project was founded, um, that was kind of it for, for computing devices. Uh, even even Apple or uh, what other, whatever other um, manufacturer, thinking Amiga or, or some other crazy stuff. No one really had, uh, even, no one's even really a blip on, on the radar. Um, so it was pretty much a, a uh, I don't know, what do you want to say? Um, that was it. If you thought of a computer, you thought of Windows and you thought of a, a desktop and everything else. And now we've really expanded. Uh, laptops are are so much more popular now, and then moving beyond that, we have so many mobile devices. I don't even know what I call them mobile, but handheld devices and whatever else, um, to the point where those those devices are actually outnumbering uh, what what you consider a traditional desktop PC. Um, so in closing closing that bug, and I think that was what last year maybe that we did that. It was sort of a recognition of the fact that um, whether or not you want to uh, say that Ubuntu was directly or indirectly responsible for that, whatever you want to say, the fact is that the market has shifted and, and that that uh, original focus has been disrupted, which is great. And that's uh, really the first step towards having uh, or being able to think of Ubuntu as the number one used OS. Um, I think Linux as well has grown significantly. And again, it's grown in these growth areas of, of uh, non-desktop devices. So. Um, I suppose Ubuntu could be the number one used OS when Ubuntu is available on those devices, and that's part of what uh, uh, we're doing with the, the phone. So when everyone in the world has a uh, Ubuntu touch phone, then I think we'll be the number one used OS. How's that? So. All right. OK, so we've got uh, another question from Global Wolfigo. While creating Unity 8, are you looking at other possible devices so that you won't have to create a completely new new UI if you ever make a console or watch version of Ubuntu? Well, that's a very, very interesting question um, as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, while Unity 8 right now is um, it's very... Um, um, Sorry, so while the development of Unity 8 has been very, very focused on um, on touch devices, on the phone, on the tablet, and now on the desktop, um, we are looking at, uh, at other device, uh, at other devices as well. Uh, we all know that wearable devices um, are the next big thing right now, and um, and uh, at Ubuntu um, and at Canonical, um, we have been known for for innovating um, across the board. And uh, this is definitely something that uh, that, that we're considering. Um, we don't have any plans right now to to share, but um, but given the fact that Unity 8 uh, and essentially the, the whole UI um, expands, uh, or um, or rather than expands, adapts to different form factors, um, a smaller form factor would be as natural to adapt as uh, as a bigger form factor as we're doing now. It's all about the the idea of uh, of convergence. 
So if convergence works for the desktop and the phone, um, it should work as well for, um, for a watch, for example. So, um, David, I, I was just thinking that we, maybe we should show uh, an example of this. So I'm, I'll try and try and, and uh, uh, set this up and install it on my machine, and I'll, I'll share it maybe in a minute. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that, uh, as David was saying, one of the, the great uh, features and ideas of, of the, the toolkit, the SDK, um, and, and the technologies that we're using is that we can scale our UIs uh, in a really easy to use way. So we can have one single code base and have it run across multiple devices and platforms, uh, including changing screen sizes, and have it all sort of work in mesh. And so uh, I think there's a few good examples of that. I'm going to try and show you one that was built by uh, Necklish, who's one of the uh, community uh, core app contributors. So I'll do that in a second once I have it up and running. OK, so while, while you're doing this, um, let me see what the next question is. Um, D. Shimmer is saying, uh, Dell, HP, NVIDIA, hosting services, uh, was it? Um, Google, GIMP, LibreOffice, Mozilla, um, examples of a long list. I have heard all of these names on one context or another and would like love to love to hear thoughts, use cases, plans, etc. Well, you definitely have a long list there, and I think it's a, it's a good it's a good um, I think it's a good example of um, of um, or rather it shows really well um, how active our business teams um, and also our community teams, our engineering teams. Um, are working with other com uh, with other organizations. Um, I probably I'm probably not the best uh, person to talk about um, business cases because essentially it's not my area. But um, just to pick one uh, one or two of the names in there, um, you're mentioning Dell and HP. Um, Dell and HP are um, are companies we've got um, um, we've got um, relationship uh, ships with um, as OEMs who install. Ubuntu by default. So, um, so for for those um, for those names, you can you can find laptops um, that uh, the cheap Ubuntu, uh, um, well, either laptops or sorry, laptops or um, or desktop PCs who uh, which uh, ship Ubuntu by default um, in different markets. Um, in terms of, uh, of NVIDIA, we've got working relationships so to make sure that the, the latest drivers work well in, um, in Ubuntu as well. Um, hosting services, um, um, I think um, one of the um, most popular, if not the, the most popular distribution uh, at Amazon uh, when people create clouds uh, is Ubuntu. Ubuntu is is a really big name um, in cloud, and we work with other um, partners such as OpenStack um, to make sure that we, we continue to grow in there. Um, Google uh, at Google, um, they use uh, Ubuntu as um, as a desktop for their engineers, and I believe they their users as well. So they've got a huge um, desktop um, install of um, of Ubuntu across the the company. Um, I can't remember which which UDS it was, but um, there was an employee uh, from Google who showed um, exactly how they use um, Ubuntu and their um, and, and and the LTSs uh, they based their own distro on um, GIMP. Um, other than um, making sure that GIMP um, is available as, as a first class citizen for. Uh, for an app to um, to do um, retouches of um, of um, sorry, I'm just reading uh, another question related to that. All right, so yeah, uh, so for GIMP, uh, we want to make sure that um, it is available in the repositories um, for everyone to to install as a um, as a first class app to um, to retouch uh, photographic images. And so on and so on. There's quite a lot of uh, of names in in that list. 
and um, this shimmer is asking uh, sorry or is adding clarification on that on that list these are um, suggestions for people to have uh, or organizations to have um, invited to um, to these Q and A's um, and to talk about um, how are they using Ubuntu um, in their context. All right. Oh, sorry. Nick. How are you? And um, how are you getting yeah, on? Let's see, let's see if I can share this. Just a second. So. Share this, but not you. <laughs> no one wants to watch multiples of David. Uh, shoot. Doesn't look like I can directly share the window in question. No, I don't think it works with uh, with QML if you're running the Apache QML. I think you have to to share the whole desktop. Yeah, no one will be able to see it if I do that. My screen is way too big. Um, well, I'll, let's give it a whirl anyway. Okay. No work on it. Oops. Uh, are you seeing this? Not yet. Oh yeah, that looks better. There we go. So let's try and... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, this is Flashback. Um, this, as I said, is an application um, and hopefully Neckfish won't mind me showing it off. Uh, still a work in progress. Uh, I just grabbed the, the latest build, so hopefully everything works and looks good. Um, and I'm just going to show you a little bit about uh, how it sort of converges across the, the desktop, and, and uh, although I won't be able to show it directly on the device as well, and you, you'll see how the, how the UI changes in response to that. So he has a little tutorial here. I'll go ahead and swipe through this. And flashback is basically uh, uh, as you can see here, is the ability to um, discover new movies and shows and keep track of what you like. Uh, so it's kind of a cool application. Um, and there's some social uh, pieces to it as well. So let's start using it. Oh, it wants me to create a new account. Okay. So this is a, just a list showing here um, he has the layout of what he would call a, for a sort of fully expanded layout. So since I'm on a desktop, I can see uh, all of the UI elements, and they're all fully expanded. And in this case, we're just showing some uh, trending television shows, and we have uh, some nice cover art here for each of them, and we have uh, a sidebar over here as well, and we have all of our... Um, all of our UE elements, and I can read everything and see it fully expanded. So if I resize the display here, you can see how it's going to shrink the UI. And then you'll notice uh, it, it will only go so small until now we're sort of in this uh, smaller tablet view. So think like, um, I don't know, a seven inch tablet or something. We've still retained all of the nice cover art. Uh, I still have a nice uh, five um, t TV shows at once here. I can see. I can still scroll, do all that good stuff, and I still have the sidebar, which has just been slightly changed. Now, if we're looking at it on a phone, obviously this layout is not going to work. So if I resize it down to, shall we say, something like phone size, I get just the... Um, cover art layout, and my sidebar is essentially gone. So you can kind of see how this is all one application, all running at the same time, and it scales. So if you're interested, uh, or if you want, want to check out the application, you can see I'm running it on my desktop. Uh, so again, this is an application that he's developing and targeting the Ubuntu Touch platform, yet it runs just fine, and it's just as useful on my desktop. Um, I'm interacting it with it 
um, in the same way that uh, I would on a tablet or phone device. So, cool stuff. Um, I will go back to David. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. All right. Well, that's a nice example of not only a beautiful looking app, but also of convergence in action already, which is pretty cool. All right, so moving on. Um, we've got uh, Traffic Jam asking, what are your plans to be even more felt and embraced in the corporate um, uh, in the corporate uh, scene, especially third world um, countries? Um, thanks. Um, so I think um, when we're talking about um, about um, corporate scene, um, that makes me think we should probably get uh, invite someone from the business team uh, in one of those uh, of these Q and A sessions. We can talk um, in more detail about um, about the plans. Um, in terms of uh, Ubuntu um, being used um, in the developing countries. Um, I think Ubuntu is a very, very um, attractive options, uh, option because of the um, of how easy it is to to set up, uh, and the fact that it doesn't incur in uh, in license fees. Um, we've got quite a lot of uh, of examples uh, where Ubuntu has been um, has been used in um, in schools uh, in parts where um, it is difficult even to get uh, to get to the to the internet. And um, at Canonical, with, we're continually talking to um, continuously talking to um, to governments uh, and institutions to um, to offer them um, um, the possibility to to um, to support them to install to install Ubuntu and to work together on uh, on this um, type of projects. Um, if you're looking for uh, for particular um, use cases um, or case studies. Um, on how um, of more particular example on how um, of um, of this being put into action, um, I would recommend um, going to insights.ubuntu.com and uh, we've got a we've got a tag called case studies um, that um, shows you some articles about how Ubuntu is um, is used. I think in this case uh, we've got a few examples of um, of Ubuntu being um, deployed um, at uh, at schools in uh, in developing countries. Um, and, um, and as I say, this um, this shows you in practice how um, how Ubuntu can um, can be um, can be used to uh, to help with um, essentially crossing this um, this digital divide that still exists in in some areas. Um, looking, I think the. Next question might be by Earplug, because we've answered Chloe Wolf Girl's question already. Uh, and they ask, is Ubuntu working to get more native support for things such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other on-demand content? Um, I think, uh, personally, having I tried Amazon Prime at one point. Um, I've, I've not never been a huge Netflix fan, but um, I don't. I don't tend to watch uh, or use a lot of video on demand services, so this is sort of out of my, out of I'm out of the target audience for this. But anyway, uh, I was a little surprised when I looked at Amazon Prime, noticing that they didn't have uh, support uh, for things like Android and that sort of thing. Um, so the idea is that yes, Netflix doesn't directly support Linux. Amazon maybe doesn't support Android. They're all supporting their preferred uh, platforms for whatever reason. Um, and since they're the the provider, um, it's a little difficult sometimes to uh, get them to support uh, your device, your platform. And I think that that goes beyond um, just Ubuntu. I think users on on all sorts of different platforms uh, encounter that sadly. Um, I will say we've seen some of this happen uh, on the gaming side for Linux, which is uh, the Wine project, which has existed for a long time. Um, and it sort of enable gamers to, to bridge that gap. I know there are similar solutions for Netflix as well. Um, utilize some of that technology so that you can you know, view it on, on, when, uh, on Ubuntu. But the idea is that when uh, games started coming native to Linux and when Steam came around and all these sort of, sort of things so that you had native uh, uh, games on Linux, 
part of that crossover period was was uh, using some of those enabling technologies like Wine to sort of cross that bridge. So I think the technology is there. Uh, it's really up to uh, the content providers uh, to to really decide to cross that bridge. But I think these the proof of concepts and some of the things that you see um, help bridge that gap, and I think it does bring us closer to having uh, native support. That's my two cents on the on the whole thing, I guess. But. Okay. Next question. Uh, this uh, okay. That's uh, that's a question from Viper Twenty Nine. How long have you guys been in the Linux scene for, and do you still use Windows or totally Linux? Uh, oh, um, I think I've been on the Linux scene for over 10 years now. Um, and the way I started was with um, with translations. Um, and I started testing different distributions uh, and I ended up with this really cool new thing called, um, called Ubuntu. And I was so impressed with the quality of the translations um, and how easy it was to get involved that I decided to, to give it a go, essentially. And uh, ever since then, I've contributed across many different areas. Uh, it's somewhere where you can never get bored. There's always something interesting to, to do. Uh, and most importantly, there's always um, really interesting um, people to, um, to get to know and to, to learn from. I've learned quite a lot um, uh, from colleagues, from team members, from friends. I've made new friends as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty much how I got started. In terms of using uh, Windows, um, I'm pretty proud to say that um, I haven't had the Windows installation, I think, ever since then. Uh, when I started with Ubuntu, I started a deal between Ubuntu and Windows. But after a while, I realized that I didn't really have anything that I needed in Windows that uh, that was in Team Ubuntu already. So there was no point for me to to continue um, using the output, and it was a pretty natural transition. So that was me. How about you, Nick? When did you start using Linux? Um, I think it also was about ten years ago, because um, I I also got in right about the time Ubuntu started, which 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 is really great. Um, I think uh, I don't think I can oversell the concept of uh, I I like David. Um, I guess I'll, I'll share the backstory first. So I was I was a Windows user uh, like most people were, uh, but I found I was increasingly frustrated with the with the desktop and the experience, and so I actually started transitioning by transitioning to discovering open source uh, through um, originally through I believe um, what was it called? I'm trying to remember now. I used to love uh, Firebird, I guess, and uh, which was the precursor to Firefox and and all that good stuff. So uh, by the end of it, I was using Firefox and Thunderbird and a whole bunch of other open source utilities and tools on my Windows desktop, and I realized, and I was like slowly just pruning back each layer and uninstalling all the default stuff and trying to find open source replacements. And I realized that maybe it might be easier just to run an open source operating system, and you know, away we went. So I, I uh, used uh, several distros in the beginning. Um, many of them were Debian based, and uh, Ubuntu was out at the time, and I think I made the, the full-time switch um, sometime after. I think I, I don't think I ran Wordy uh, completely. I think it was Breezy um, that, uh, or Hori, I should say, uh, that I, that I um, started with, whatever, running full-time. But uh, that's how I did it for me, was really transitioning off. Um, so, and... and I don't know. I thought I thought it was really interesting and cool. I, I see uh, RPI awesome awesomeness has a follow up question. He's talking about software that replaces most of your needed software on Windows. So in my case, that was really easy. As I said, I sort of transitioned and then and then switched operating systems. So when I came to to Linux, I actually had more software available to me uh, that I wanted to use than <laughs> than on Windows. I wasn't having to like figure out ways to get the software that I wanted. Um, which I suspect is probably puts me in a very small percentage of people who, who wanted something that they couldn't get on Windows. Um, but I think it's gotten easier over time. Um, there's, there's so much uh, um, 
stuff in the cloud. The internet has really um, sort of flattened the uh, the landscape on you know software needs and that sort of thing. So, how about you, David? What about what about from a software perspective? Oh, for me, what what did it was that I was I was really amazed about the fact that um, I didn't have to pirate software anymore. I <laughs> Didn't have to go and um, and find software at uh, dubious sites when I needed to do something, and um, and from a moral perspective, uh, it was it felt much better to use uh, to use Ubuntu to you to use uh, software that had been created by by volunteers and had been released in the in the open software that was uh, that was legal, and um, and I mean the reason I'm mentioning this is not on, only because like pirated software or, or, or looking for um, for or trying to find to find uh, software um, that you can get to work on on, on Windows. Um, it was about um, how smooth, how clean it was to um, to install software. You just went to Synaptic back in the days, and you just found something, and you just clicked on it, and it got installed from the internet. Um, you didn't have to buy it. You didn't have to look much for it. Look, uh, look much for it, and um, and it was just amazing. I mean, and the fact that the the operating system uh, upgraded um, like automatically off the internet. You didn't have to go through uh, through service pack CDs. Um, you didn't have to uh, reinstall the system. Uh, you just updated. The, the, I mean. Essentially, you got a system that, that that was new every six months, which was unthinkable of with uh, with Windows. So that that was software-wise, what did it for me? Yes, I think that the first time I had to reinstall Ubuntu, I was pretty blown away at you know the idea of not having to lose all of your stuff and not having to go through tons of time and yeah, it's a lot. Those those are sort of hidden gems that you find along the way. Um, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, Daza asks. Uh, Just a perfect about, question for you. Yeah. He said, "Well, he says, can we go through creating tests from scratch in a tutorial on how to contribute?" Um, and he says, "I read the docs online, but seeing it in action would be nice too." Um, yes, I can totally do that. And today at 1900, if you come back here on ubuntuonair.com, we will be doing exactly that. Um, and we'll, me and uh, a couple other folks, will be demonstrating uh, writing automated tests and using Python and Autopilot, and we're going to try and work on some Autopilot helpers for the core apps. So if you're, you know, know Python and into programming and have those skills, please join us. If you don't, um, then we're also working on manual test cases as well. So for that, all you need to be able to do is uh, read and write English, and you're good to go. We're going to be working on some uh, manual test cases for, uh, I believe, some of the flavors that still have some of the default applications. Uh, you can also hack on some of our existing test cases for uh, Ubuntu and, and whatever else. So um, plenty of cool stuff to do. Uh, 1900 UTC right here on UbuntuOnAir.com today. So your wish is my command. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we've got about uh, 15 minutes to go. Um, we've got a um, couple of announcements to make. And we've got a bunch of questions, so we'll uh, try to go through all of your questions. Um, we might be a bit more brief than, than the rest of the of the session, so that we can go through everyone's questions. Okay. So next question is uh, from RPI Awesomeness. Is there any plan to bring Ubuntu stores that sell Ubuntu gear uh, to the US? Um, not that I know of. Uh, I mean, the the Ubuntu shop. Um, where you can get um, all, of, all of your Ubuntu gear is available online um, in almost every country of the world, and um, and yeah, well, it, it would be nice to have some retail, like physical retail um, stores. Um, I think our focus, rather than um, than, than selling um, Ubuntu gear, is more about um, making sure that we produ produce um, uh, an operating system. That um, is essentially used by everyone. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll see any any plans um, in creating um, retail stores, other than um, retail stores that sell computers with uh, with Ubuntu, um, which we've got um, quite a lot of them already. 
um, in China um, and even in other countries, I believe, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, Chloe Wolf Girl asks, I had to read this a couple of times, but she says, with Ubuntu Touch, are people within Canonical working with people who make desktop apps for Canonical to create Ubuntu Touch apps, such as Firefox, Venom Talks, IRC Clients, VLC, uh, to make sure Ubuntu Touch keeps getting more community support and better apps? So I believe she's asking, uh, are we working with people who uh, AKA app developers who are writing applications that are targeting Ubuntu to make sure that those applications um, are now targeting Ubuntu Touch. Um, the uh, <coughs> excuse me. The quick answer to that is yes. Um, uh, the more specific answer I'll give something random. I was just talking with Dan before we started, um, and Churjita I think is a good example of this. So Churjita is. Uh, an email client which started on the desktop and it's sort of an up-and-coming thing so it's still in development and uh, we're working with those guys and specifically uh, folks like Dan and some of our uh, other community contributors are actually working to make sure it works on Ubuntu Touch. Um, so I think that's just one example and I think you'll see more things like that um, where you have uh, sort of these traditional desktop applications um, either are rewritten or are converted or ported or however you want to say it um, expanded to also support the idea of Ubuntu Touch and converging devices and screens and all, all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, next question from Chloe Wolfie Girl. Will Mir do anything for end users? Will it make things look and feel smoother on the desktop, etc.? That's a really good question. Um, there's been quite a lot of talk about mirror display, um, display managers uh, and compositors and so on. And I think the one thing to know is that as a user, you probably shouldn't need to worry about this. Um, the goal is that you have the same um, smooth experience that you had um, before the switch to mirror um, as after the switch to mirror. Um, so, well, I think some of the animations um, will feel smoother from looking at uh, what the phone looks like with uh, with Mir. Um, I think um, the good thing is that you either won't notice the difference or we, you will notice uh, a slight improvement. So I think that's pretty much it in a, in a nutshell. Yeah, I mean, it, it will enable some things, although we have it a bit. Um, I know there's a big push a little while ago for... Uh, flickerless boot, for instance, and that's something that that Meteor will allow for a, a lot easier than than something on a traditional X server. The handoffs will be less and that sort of thing. So, a smoother experience for sure. Um, Chloe, Chloe Wolfie Girl again asks, why would a developer who is making Android and iPhone apps make a Ubuntu app, make a Ubuntu Touch app? Excuse me. I'll let David take that. <laughs> okay, so. Um, there are different reasons. Um, I mean, there are, there are people who develop um, who will develop an application because they, uh, for for Ubuntu because they are Ubuntu users. Um, they use Ubuntu for for develop, development, even if they, they develop apps for for other platforms. And they they believe in open source. They um, and they want to um, to see their application um, um, being put to use uh, for Ubuntu users. Um, I think. Most um, app developers have realized that um, if you want um, if you want to thrive um, as as a developer, you have to expose your content to different platforms. And uh, what we're working on is uh, on making Ubuntu uh, an attractive platform for people to um, to to port their apps their apps on. Um, there are other things um, such as the, the technologies uh, that we use. Um, if you're a web designer, for example. It is really easy to port your application, your HTML, sorry, to port your HTML5 code to to Ubuntu. So as a web designer, that would be Ubuntu would be a very attractive platform to get my um, to get my app running um, on, um, since it would would um, not essentially um, need many modifications. Uh, we're using standard technologies for that. Um, so yeah, so exposure to um, to multiple to multiple platforms, um, exposure to a platform that's um, that's innovative and that's going to be a key player 
in the next few in the next few years. And um, and also we should uh, we should mention um, scopes, not only apps. Um, apps uh, are something that every every platform um, offers. Um, and while uh, we do want to, to increase our market share, um, we realize that, uh, that it, uh, it's a tough mar market. Um, the differentiating part about Ubuntu um, is our um, scopes offering as well. So this is something that an app developer should be considering as well. And essentially, scopes are a way to, um, to provide content um, in a way that's very, very integrated in the, um, in the US and in a way that uh, it enables you as a developer um, or as an OEM to um, to modify the UI um, and um, and to make it easier for users to get uh, to get content to get to, to search content and, and to get results. So yeah, I'd say it's a combination of uh, of all of those. Okay. Um... So we, we are really running low on time, David, so let's try and rapid fire some of these questions. How does that sound? Yeah. Um, MP151 asks, what, what are the small inc smallest computing platforms, for example, Raspberry Pi, Hummingboard, that Ubuntu has tested and can run? Um, we, I think, I think you've answered your, your question to some extent. Um, obviously, you can, you can put Linux on all sorts of things, and people have, um, and Ubuntu has nothing uh, specific or any requirements beyond uh, beyond what you would expect. So um, we have uh, we have an uh, ARM HF, um, branch. I believe we dropped support for extremely old uh, ARM devices some time ago. So I think that would be the only constraint that you would have, uh, as long as it's a newer ARM chip or uh, x86 chip, or even uh, uh, some uh, power PC or whatever else. Um, you could probably run it. Uh, Sonam asks, uh, talking about uh, having a, a stable distro, so he wants something, he says, why doesn't Ubuntu believe in something that works? It's better to leave it that way instead of changing every time. Um, he's saying his system upgrades make his system unstable, that sort of thing. Um, so he's asking, is there a way we can keep things stable and increase hardware compatibility? Uh, to me, it sounds like um, if, if you may be having some issues, you know, there might be hardware issues or other things underlying if you're seeing frequent breakages or an unstable system. But that aside, if you want something that's that's well supported, that doesn't change very often, and that uh, stays stable while increasing hardware compatibility, you, you just described our LTS releases. Um, and <laughs> I, I would highly encourage you to check those out. Uh, Trusty is, is the latest one, and uh, if for some reason Trusty isn't working well for you. You can also try Precise, which is still still supported for a few more years yet. Um, and if you have newer hardware, or as things change and you you plug new components into your system, um, we have uh, LTS uh, has uh, enablement kernels, uh, enablement stacks. I'm just trying to think of the name, which brings a uh, newer X server and newer kernel to the older release. So that's the idea of increasing hardware compatibility while keeping everything else stable. So if you haven't checked them out, I would really encourage you to check out our LTS releases. Um, and if you're having something, a specific problem, um, or you think something's acting really weird, uh, you might want to try askubuntu.com, ask a question, and, and see if there isn't something wrong with your system or hardware, potentially. Maybe, maybe not. Um, Fully Wolfie Girl says, after my Zoom and BQ release, uh, the first Ubuntu touch of phones, what's next? Or should I ask who is Sony BlackBerry? Etc. Uh, who's going to be shipping phones with Ubuntu Touch on it? Go ahead, David. All right. So, um, so yeah. I mean, uh, one thing to realize is that we are continually um, talking to hardware manufacturers and uh, trying to find opportunities to ship Ubuntu um, on the, um, on retail phones and. Um, and we're also talking with um, with operators and um, and OEMs. Um, we cannot say um, who because um, this is something that uh, our team is not working on, the community team. Um, I can say that we're talking to um, um, to those people. Uh, I cannot confirm any names, but um, I'm sure after the um, the first um, 
phone launch with uh, with Meizu and BQ, we're going to get more and more interest in um, in, in, uh, in Ubuntu as our, an operating system for for mobiles. Um, and uh, I'm sure that there will be more more announcements. Um, I can safely say I think though that uh, Apple won't be one of those names uh, as much <laughs> as people would uh, um, would like it. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, I think I think we should you should expect um, more once we uh, once we launch the first uh, physical devices with uh, with Ubuntu. Okay, we have. Uh, I see like a couple other questions. Let's let's do like ten second answers for these. Uh, Vassal asks, will Ubuntu make a competitor for the Google Web API? Um, I don't know what the Google Web API is, but I'm not familiar with it. I'm not familiar with it um, either. Um, my, so it my assumption is no. Whatever it is, I mean, we we're not really into the internet API type services, so it's probably a no. Uh, and Chumpis asks, uh, is there any plans to change the layout or, or look of the Ubuntu software center? Software center, excuse me, give it a more Unity feel or look. Um, I, I think I'll let David talk about that, but yeah, I, essentially the um, I don't think we'll see many. I don't think we'll see many changes on the on software center. Um, we will see more changes as we move to a, a Unity 8 session. Um, in the sense that um, you'll be able to transparently install applications from the dash uh, in the same way that you do with uh, with the phone. So rather than having a dedicated um, a dedicated application for that, um, you will be able to just uh, do a search for an application, click on it, and uh, and install it all directly uh, from the dash. So you'll have a much much uh, integrated much. Much more integrated experience as uh, as a user. That said, the uh, the software center um, is still in the repository, so for those who want to use it, you'll still be able to to install it. But as I say the idea is that um, installation um, becomes a more integrated workflow, and um, and this can be done from from the dash. All right. So you'll see. I think, as with with many other things, you'll see that converge across back to the desktop. So a lot of the stuff you see on the phone you see come back. So that that is sort of the future. The future, yeah, that sounds cool. So, <laughs> all right. Okay, so I think um, we're running out of time and uh, as as I see I think we've answered all of the questions that we had right now. So hopefully. let me take oh sorry Nick. Was there any other one? No I said hopefully we have, but yes, go ahead. Get your <laughs> announcement. Yeah if not uh, just please come back for more next week. Uh, and we'll answer the rest. All right. So I just wanted to make a couple of uh, of quick announcements of things or of exciting things that have been happening this week um, in the in the Ubuntu world. Um, so um, for those of you who, have, who follow the um, our Google Plus community, you will have already seen some of this. Um, the new blog application has landed in the store for testing, um, which means that uh, we have a um, a new Google web application um, installable um, for you to try. It is the, essentially the new redesign of the clock application, um, which has got uh, a lot more cooler uh, animations, uh, much more visually appealing look. It's got uh, world clock um, support, and uh, it will eventually support uh, replace the um, the old clock application in the images. That said, you'll be able to install both. Um, Side to side from from the store, um, and on this, uh, I'd like to thank Nicholas Ramanathan from um, from the Corrupts team. He's a volunteer community developer who's been really rocking at uh, not only developing the old clock application but also um, in uh, essentially translating the the design specs into into reality. Uh, so you should just go and check it. It looks really really awesome. Um, go and install the. The clock application from from the store, and continuing with uh, with uh, awesomeness and uh, and applications on, on Ubuntu and phones, uh, reminders: the application that's um, the notes note taking application that's powered by Evernote as a third party um, API has landed in the images already. Um, not only that, but uh, we've switched from using uh, testing accounts to regular um, Evernote accounts. So. 
Um, not only is Reminder is now installable from the store, but it comes pre-installed with the with the images. So, for those of you of you who are, are already Evernote users, um, you'll find it really cool to to find third-party integration um, with your um, favorite note-taking app, um, also on Ubuntu. I think that's that's pretty cool. That shows the interest uh, from from ISVs um, and popular names um, in the apps world um, in Ubuntu. So. I think that's uh, I think that's pretty exciting. All right. Uh, so the next one that we've got is that um, we are wrapping up to uh, to what we call the RTM milestone. RTM is uh, released to manufacture, and uh, it's a deadline that we've set uh, for essentially having the phone ready to hand over to. Um, or sorry, I should say to having the wound phone images ready to hand them over to um, to phone manufacturers. And um, and that means that we want to have everything ready by by August, um, and that means um, that means translations as well. Um, Ubuntu has already translated uh, into um, more than twenty languages uh, on the phone, but we want to have more and more coverage. We want to make Ubuntu available for everyone to use in their native language. So um, if you um, if you've got uh, translation skills. Um, Make sure that um, that you head to um, to projects.davidplanella.org um, slash stats, uh, and there you'll find um, translation statistics for all of the languages, and uh, you'll find links on how to get started and contribute to um, to Ubuntu. Um, so again, this is um, this is projects.davidplanella.org slash stats. And finally, I think the last one I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave for you for Unique. Uh, I think you wanted to talk a bit about the Hackfest today. Yeah, um, I'll just mention it again real quick. Uh, so at, at 1900 UTC today, right here on Ubuntu on Air, um, we'll be doing a Hackfest for uh, writing test cases. And that covers both manual and, and automated test cases. So you don't feel like you need to know a programming language or be a developer in order to write test cases. You just need to be able to read and write English, and we can teach you everything else you need to know. And so we'll be having uh, some demonstrations today at 1900, as I said, right here on Ubuntu on Air. And then we'll be hanging out, and uh, we have uh, a list of stuff we're, we're going to try and get done, and some new test cases we're going to try and write. So we'd love to have you. Uh, we'll be happy to help you if you're new. Uh, this is the perfect time to come out and uh, write some test cases with us. So hope to see you there. Excellent. All right, I think with that, we can wrap up the um, questions. I um, uh, don't think there are any others that we haven't answered already. And we've covered the announcement as well. So, um, so yeah, I think all that's left is to thank everyone for, um, for watching us. Thanks, everyone, for participating with your interesting questions. Um, and um, stay tuned for uh, what's coming up, up next week. Uh, as usual, we'll have a weekly um, Q&A. And if I remember correctly, I think next week we have a guest uh, from the design team. We will have uh, Giorgio Venturi um, talking about the uh, latest design changes in Ubuntu, um, and in particular um, in the in the clock app that we've been mentioning um, already. So stay tuned for the uh, for the announcements on uh, on the Ubuntu social networks, on Facebook, on Google Plus, um, and on Twitter, and everywhere else essentially. And um, and yeah, next week, same time, same hour. Um, sorry, same time, same day. Um, uh, we'll be here to answer all of your questions. So yeah, thank you, everyone. And uh, see you next week. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. See you.